Well, the Simon Youth Foundation is celebrating its 20th anniversary. The organization has spent the last two decades changing the lives of high school dropouts in Indiana and far beyond. In our Eye on Education segment this week, CEO Jay Michael Dernal is here to explain how the nonprofit's 20,000 current lifetime graduates could have an estimated economic impact of nearly $10 billion. And Michael, welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. And I mentioned that number, 20,000. That's a bit of breaking news here because you have just actually crossed that threshold of 20,000 graduates. Literally yesterday, the 20,000th graduate of wow. Simon Youth Foundation graduated from one of our academies across the country. We're keeping it a little under wraps. We'll announce uh, it at our December graduation ceremonies. Wow, that's impressive. And uh, the impact of the Simon Youth Foundation, it's hard to overstate it, in my <laughs> opinion. I just think it's, it's amazing. 20 years. Talk about how this concept, uh, how these schools, how it all came about. Well, Simon Property Group as an entity probably actually should be credited with it creating corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. It has been a family value, it's been a corporate value to give back mm -hmm. to the communities where they serve. So one of the ways uh, mall managers are to be very entrepreneurial in their world, they see kids hanging out in the middle of the mall and they say, why are you here? And kids would often say, because we feel like we don't fit anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So let's turn that on its head and bring schools into, into the mall and that's how we started. Very first academy was in San Antonio, Texas, um, and uh, the story just goes from there. We're finding, you know, we kind of jokingly say, you know, one size doesn't fit all, and in the mall world, we know that they're specialized, so why does education have to be that way? Yeah, and, and truly, you're, you're, you're changing lives, and in many cases, maybe saving lives, too, of high school dropouts, turning them into to, to graduates and going on to, to careers and, and uh, fruitful lives. Right, either through our scholarship program, many of them continue on to four, two year, four year, or technical training, or they choose to go on into the world of work, and we just hope that we prepare them for whatever comes next. Yeah. The success uh, is in some of these numbers. Uh, you're in 15 states now, uh, mm -hmm. I believe. You have just approved a couple more academies, so you'll have 41 academies next year. Seven will be here in central Indiana, but again, you've got them in states around the country. Yeah, we're thrilled. We've been able to grow our network through a hub and spoke method, nodes, we call them. We have uh, five schools in Southern California. California, four in Seattle, seven here in central Indiana, a couple in the Boston area, four in Florida. So we continue to expand th what, through that way. I know there are probably many, many, many stories, but uh, stories that as you reflect on some of the graduates and some of the, the young people who've gone through the program. <laughs> They're amazing stories of resilience, of grit. We've had students who've gone on to get Fulbright scholarships. Students wow. uh, we know of a former alum who is a mayor of a small town in Texas. This year we also celebrated the very second an alumni to come back as a teacher in one of our academies wow. in independent Missouri. But we often have the opportunity to talk to the students as a graduation and try to glean from them their own personal stories. And had a young man just recently tell me, uh, you know, I said, what's next? Are you excited? I said, are you thrilled? He said, well, I'm just happy to be alive. And I kind of chuckled at that for a minute and thought, well, you know, high school's mm -hmm. rough. And then it, it, it hit me. He was happy to be alive. And so I think we provide that refuge and a place where a student feels like they belong. Yeah. And important for us too is that the teachers feel like they belong. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the teachers because there's the teaching component, but, but there's <coughs> an added component, I think, that, that you really focus on in terms of, of dealing with students and their particular personal lives. The whole student. You yeah. know, so many of our, so many teachers are content experts, but we work with our teachers and that's the value add we bring in the foundation to the districts to provide them the opportunity to have teachers understand that student that's standing in front of them. Did they have breakfast today? Did they have trauma in their home? Mm -hmm. Did they have trauma growing up? How do you help a student in that situation actually get to graduation day? They need something different. They need a different set of competencies in schools and teachers are the ones who can deliver that. Yeah, and, and finally, you talk about the human uh, uh, positive situation out of this, the ac economic development piece uh, and getting these high school graduates <laughs> into the workplace, I think you're put, put the, pegging the number at about $10 billion. Right, right. we know from uh, the U.S. Department and government statistics that every kid who graduates high school is gonna earn about a half a million dollars more in their life over the course of their lifetime. That times 20,000 is 10 billion. Last year we had our largest graduate graduating class of over 2,000, almost 2,100 students nationally, and that was a billion dollars alone. Yeah, wow. J. Michael Durnell is the president and CEO at the Simon Youth Foundation. Uh, 20 years of great impact. Uh, here's to another 20 years. Uh, Michael, great to see you. Thanks very much. Thanks for having us.